I'm Matt. And I'm Peyton. And this is our 45 foot shipping container home located in Washington State. We moved in in April of 2020. Um, we got the container here on site in August of last year, 2019. So a little less than a year of build time. Me and Peyton spent numerous hours down here after work because um, we both have jobs. So juggling work and building the container a little bit under a year. So previous to uh, our shipping container purchase, we had a schoolie um, and we sold that and used that to buy the container. Um, and after it was all said and done, um, it cost about $20,000, including furniture and all of the good things in there. Um, we used a lot of secondhand stores, um, reclaimed wood from family and things like that too. So that helped us save quite a bit. This is a five acre chunk on the Pondere River. Um, it's a thousand feet of river frontage and the thing most people notice about our property right away is the view. The view is my favorite part of this property. Um, you'll see we placed the container in a strategic location at a strategic angle so that we could see um, both sides of the river so we can see upstream and downstream. Uh, we also built the deck to be the same square footage as the container so that we can really appreciate the view when we have friends over. Uh, so I'd like to invite you inside to come see our container home. So welcome inside our tiny house. And this is our tiny kitchen. Um, these cabinets are secondhand mm -hmm. um, reclaimed cabinets. We, uh, <laughs> we scored really lucky on these. Um, they all come with uh, Soft shut hinges, uh, which is a really nice feature that we really, that was on the checklist of things we wanted um, with our cabinets. Um, I like that we had the idea to use this cheap metal as a backsplash rather than buying tile. It went up super fast. It's really easy to wipe down. One of my favorite things about the kitchen that we use that I think would be beneficial for others to know about is this induction cooktop right here. Um, we pull it out, we put it on the counter, um, and we're able to get two pans on there or a pot in a pan, um, one of each, whatever. And this is what we use to cook. Um, it has worked awesome and saved us a ton of counter space, yeah. being able to put that away and then using this if we need to cut things up, mm -hmm. um, things like that. Yeah, and then going off of that, the microwave that I installed has an extractor fan, so it takes the cooking air and puts it outside and I think that's crucial if you're planning on living in a tiny space is to get that food air out otherwise yeah. your clothes your sheets everything's gonna smell like bacon and grease and then going off the counter space like she was saying um, this sink we picked up with a sliding cutting board um, and then this little dish rack um, little things that add uh, add value to the small space yeah. you know everything has to have a purpose or it just doesn't belong yeah. Um, that's that's one thing I would say. Yeah, this cutting board we use this every day. <laughs> yeah, we, um, yeah, yeah we use super the easy. Can come come out so you can take it to the garbage, yep. to the sink, uh, whatever works. Um, and then uh, another thing too, I just I was just realizing is we put under cabinet lighting in. Um, so I don't know if you can see the hue off <laughs> the metal, but um, at nighttime in here we leave that on. It just adds a nice cozy, cozy feature to the space. Another thing you'll notice is we went with a full-size fridge. Um, so this was not my decision. <laughs> this was uh, Matt's yeah. decision. I wanted something a little bit more compact, a little bit smaller. Um, looking back at it now, I'm happy with the decision to go full-size. Mm -hmm. uh, especially living where we live, we need to get more than a week's worth of food. Um, yeah. We're buying so, in bulk mostly. Yeah, to yeah. buy in bulk and be able to store that here has been a necessity yeah. for us. Especially the freezer, like the big chest freezer. We can get meat yeah. and freeze it for a long time. And that limits our trips to town and mm -hmm. stuff. Because uh, there's a grocery store up here, but it's um, it's pretty limited on yeah. what you can buy there. So it's nice to stock up for a month and then not have to go back into town. The walls, we used um, three quarter inch tongue and groove. Um, and then this L trim, it's all pine, um, so it smelled really good when we put it in too. Um, and then for the ceiling, let's start at the trim actually. That's a uh, reclaimed wood from a building that got tore down. Um, and I sourced that locally as well, like I did for the foundation. Like a lot of things in here I try, if I could find it locally and cheaply, I would. And I think that's how we stayed 
right around that twenty thousand dollar mark versus like those forty thousand dollar tiny houses you see yeah i think the tongue and groove um maybe added some time to our build um just because it's a lot of work to put it all together um get two ladders have one person down here one person down there nail gun all of that um yeah that's a good but it was point. just important to us to kind of have that homey feel that cabin feel while still being able to stay modern, I think, um, was important to us. So I, I would do it again. Yeah. But definitely a lot slower than hanging sheetrock. <laughs> um, definitely a lot slower. If you've been following anything to do with tiny houses, you've probably seen this stove. It's very common in um, small spaces. It's a really great company. Uh, I would really recommend going with the Cubic Me Wood Stove. We've burned in it twice so far, and it puts off a ton of heat for how small it is. So I would highly recommend it. It does, it was kind of fun. We just cut wood the other day. You have to cut like little six, <laughs> yeah, inch, six pieces, inch pieces, but uh, it doesn't take that much. Yeah. So it um, yeah. wasn't too it's difficult. It's tedious to cut, but um, it burns for a long time. It does, so. yeah. Um, over here, you'll see our island. Um, I use this to work from home. Um, so as a teacher, it's kind of my office space. Um, and then you will notice this tin that we have on the side here. Um, I didn't want to do sheetrock. It sounded boring to me. Um, and I didn't feel like trying to paint it. We already had the flooring in. I didn't want to deal with taping things off and all of that. Um, so I went with this company, um, American Tin Ceilings. So this is actually meant for a ceiling, um, but we used it here. It went on easy. They fit together kind of like puzzle pieces um, and they had some nice trim already made. Uh, so I think it's a nice accent, kind of a little pop in our house um, and I would do it again. Yeah, I really think like when you first walk in here, this is the first thing that people look at. Like, it really catches your eye um, and it ties in all the other like stainless steel um, deals in the house like the fridge the stove um, so it, it turned out really nice that was all Peyton's idea I was I didn't realize the vision she had at first um, and I was really really proud of the way it turned out so yeah and then our countertops I would say we saved money here as well um, we wanted kind of like a marble granite look mm -hmm. um, but didn't want to pay for it <laughs> and so we just went um, Home Depot you know, found a giant slab. We had to cut some to size and all of that. Um, but I definitely, th definitely think it saved us money just going with, you know, the Home Depot made ones. So yeah, it's a particle board laminate countertop. So it's not solid. It's kind of, I don't know what you call it, but there's a sheet of laminate on top mm -hmm. and it has a, like a granite um, graphic on it. Yeah. Um, it looks really nice. I'm, I'm really pleased with the way it turned out and it yeah. was super easy to cut. So it's holding up well. Yeah. And then underneath our island, we have our washer and dryer. So we went with like the smaller, more compact washer and dryer. We debated on them versus uh, the combo washer dryer. We ended up going with these. Uh, we just felt like kind of after assessing the situation, they were gonna work better. Um, I didn't want to downsize my washer load to half to put it in the dryer. They've worked great. Yeah. So great. For just two people living here, I only do laundry about once a week. Um, it's worked great. We do, you know, about an hour on the wash, hour on the dry, mm -hmm. um, pretty easy. Yeah, and then we added these bar stools um, next to them. We use it as our eating area as well. Kind of a way to get a kitchen table in a tiny home without actually having to put <laughs> yeah. a kitchen table in a tiny home. That's it, then touching on that, it's like finding multiple uses for one thing yeah. in the same space. Um, so like we fold clothes there, we eat there, it houses the washer and dryer mm -hmm. um, and you work from yeah. there that's your office so it's like this multifunctional area yeah um, so that's important definitely yeah and then moving to um, our couch here we got this couch from Ikea we love it um, not only is it our couch but it doubles as the guest bed so you'll notice this pulls out which we also use every night when we watch movies as a footrest, <laughs> footrest yeah. and then it pops up here um, like this and so it's a guest bed it can fit two people comfortably I guess you could get more if you're willing yeah. um, and then we have a uh, storage for like sheets and blankets and um, comforters for this guest bed um, we just store them in there in that giant storage compartment we also decided to go with a wall mount for the TV mm -hmm. obviously and then the floating mantle obviously same thing um, instead of having a big entertainment center here we kind of wanted everything up on the wall out of the way um, and this has worked out great. This um, post was a cutoff from our post from the lean-to. <laughs> so uh, it goes back to like using the scraps that you have throughout the project and other places um, yeah. has worked out well. 
And then another place we did that was around our sliding barn door. This is the same trim we got around the ceiling from that building that got tore down. Um, so we used that to mount the rail system for the, for the barn door. Um, and that's worked out really great. This is our bathroom. Um, it's actually a pretty good size for <laughs> the tiny house we're living in. Um, we, this is the same cabinets we have in the kitchen. We also got one for here for our vanity. This is our hamper yeah. that we kind of use in this space. And it works out good. We can keep our dirty clothes out of sight, out of mind um, before we do laundry for the week. Our shower, we custom built. These are MDF panels that have a flood coat of epoxy and then waterproofing red guard on the back. Um, we have a tile niche or niche. I guess I, I still <laughs> I don't, don't know, know how to say that word. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we just trimmed it out with that um, the stuff you see in like hotels, that white trim, because it looks looks all right. Um, and this shower, we built it for under 50 bucks. So that was a huge seller for us rather than buying like a two, $300 insert. Um, that was a no brainer for us to just go ahead and build it ourselves. And we have floating shelves above the toilet. Mm -hmm. The toilet we went with is a 0.8 gallons per flush mm -hmm. since we're trying to conserve water, um, especially right now since we don't have our well hooked up. Yeah. Yeah, we're always looking um, to gain more storage here. Um, so this corner shelf was pretty important to me to find a way uh, to gain some more drawer storage, especially, you know, being a girl, I've got some extra products <laughs> here. But yeah, toilet paper, you know, medicine, things like that, um, all go in here. And then we each get a drawer over here. Each get a I drawer. wanted to, but he wouldn't let me. <laughs> nope. <laughs> um, and then we have an electrical um, utility kind of closet um, right here. So this is where our electrical panel is. And then miscellaneous things um, that you don't want people to see when they come in your house, you know, brooms, the Dyson vacuum, mops, um, laundry detergent, things like that. And I would highly recommend adding kind of like an electrical closet place to hide your things. Um, it's come in very handy for us, I would say. And then for this space, we also have the heater. It's a cadet wall heater. That's been really great, especially the climate we live in when it's cold to get out of the shower that thing really heats up this space and where we hang our towels i've also like hung my like snow pants up <laughs> to kind of like thaw them off um warm my clothes up the gloves it's kind of like a dry room too a little bit yeah so. i would say and so we spray foamed um the container walls um and i would say throughout the day it's it's cold here where we live um, mm -hmm. and i just run this for now um yeah. so we're in fall um and this pretty much does the job yeah if uh if you're gonna insulate a tiny house, I would definitely recommend spray foam. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's done really great. And then also in the summertime too, keeping this metal cool. Um, when the sun hits this thing, it wants to just heat up. The spray foam has really been a nice barrier between that. And we actually also put um, fiberglass mm -hmm. insulation over top of that. We did. So this thing is very well <laughs> insulated and that was a big, big ticket item for us. Like when we were going down, down through the list of things we needed mm -hmm. in this space, so. And on the other side of the house, we have the bedroom. We have his and hers closets. Um, they're from Ikea. They took us probably 20 minutes to build each. Yeah, um, I think for me, finding a wardrobe was hard. Um, I wanted to utilize the high cube container um, and not a lot of wardrobes are this tall. Um, and so honestly, the only place I could find one that was this tall was Ikea. Um, and I'm very happy with yeah. the way they turned out. We were able to kind of customize how we wanted them. So, you know, drawers that pull out um, were important for us. Um, shoe racks, so doubles. Um, saving space again is important. And then also having somewhere to hang your clothes yeah. um, was important. That's a good thing you touched on, like the high cube. The, um, you could really take advantage of the high ceiling mm -hmm. room that you have in one of these. Um, and I don't know if we're utilizing it the best, but the wardrobes definitely they definitely did. Yeah. But there's other places like we could have put cabinets up on the walls higher for more storage. We still might. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's it's uh, ever changing, so we might put some up on the walls. Um, this is our bed. It's a queen size um, bed. It's a purple mattress actually. That's something I'm really proud of. Finally splurged and bought the purple. It's a great bed. Would 10 out of 10 recommend. Yeah. And um, the view we have from our bedroom um, was another 
key reason why we put the container where we mm -hmm. did and how we angled it, like Peyton was saying. Yeah. Um, we wanted to be able to open those doors up and then see down the river. Um, so we wake up to that every morning and it's been great. Yeah, and the stars at night are oh, amazing yeah. from this window as well. Um, there's no light pollution here or anything, so we get kind of the best of both worlds with the, the morning river view and the night stars. <laughs> This is our air conditioning for the tiny house. Mm -hmm. It's a new air. Like a portable AC Yeah, it's a portable unit. AC unit. Um, and it does really great. It kicks ass in the space. I think it's rated for up to like 500 square feet. So we're at 360. Yeah. So it's more, more than can handle cooling down and heating the space. Um, originally we were going to go with the LG split. Um, so that has an external unit that has to sit on the outside of the house. So we would have to have built a pad for that versus this just has like kind of an extraction hose. It was super easy to install and yeah, I love it. It works out I great. Too. Yeah. It has a remote, you can set like, mm -hmm. like your sleep time mm -hmm. on it so it can turn off at certain times. It's like really custom, customizable yeah. um, for you. So. Yeah, definitely going back to again, the insulation. I think because we insulated so well, this unit, um, just the yeah. single unit does what we need it to do. Uh, we went with a slider in the bedroom, mostly for the view, but also so that we can access underneath the bed. You'll notice that we kind of built the bed up just a little bit higher than a normal bed would sit. Um, and again, when you're living tiny, you need storage. So we definitely have utilized underneath the bed, um, whether it be, you know, winter jackets, um, extra food, paper towels, things like that. Um, that all sits underneath and we're able to access that from outside, which is awesome. Another cool thing we did was we recessed the slider into the container and then we're able to keep the original container doors on the container. So let's go check it out. So one thing you might notice um, about the outside of our container is that we left the original doors on here. Um, and we did that for security purposes. Uh, when we leave for long periods of time, we like to be able to close and lock the doors. Also nice if it's really cold out to be able to keep the container very well insulated. So we made the decision to leave the original doors on. And touching on um, the fact of it getting really cold up here, uh, we usually experience a lot of snow in this area. So um, the pitch of the roof, we decided to go with a three by 12 and it spans from the top of the container all the way over to the lean-to where we park um, vehicles and tools um, but that what that does for us is it gives a place for the snow to shed off away from our deck away from the living space and we can still enjoy this outdoor view this is our utility shed it houses our big water tank because we don't have a well on the property yet and this is the propane tank that we use for our hot water heater it is a tankless hot water heater uh, i can't say enough good things about it we haven't had any issues so far um, we we really enjoy that in here there's a 1500 gallon water tank and we use a 200 gallon water tank to transport the water so we go to a water source fill up and then bring it back here um, and use kind of a hosing creation that we have uh, <laughs> made and it fills it in about six trips so it doesn't really take uh, that much effort and surprisingly it's lasted us about three months before we have to refill when we uh, were developing this property, this all used to be treed in. Mm -hmm. uh, so it took a lot of nights with uh, Peyton running the backhoe and me running a chainsaw to cut down and skid all the trees out of here. When we built the road, I put a ditch in the road and I put the power out here, but I also put a water line in the ditch. As of right now, we're not using that water line. When we get the well, we'll hook that water line up and we'll have this be fully running off the well. We won't have to do any more trips with our truck. As the uh, first time homeowners and first time property owners, um, it's been insane just like the maintenance that it takes mm -hmm. to own property. Like for example, we've had trees come down across the road and <laughs> nobody's, you know, it's not like you're in a neighborhood development where your neighbors are gonna help you out. It's, you have to fire up the chainsaw and cut your way out. Um, we've had like parts of our road kind of flood with water mm -hmm. um, and then this like in the winter where we live it's just snow removal constantly so that's the challenging aspect um, it's just not like 
you know, where if you live in the city, your streets get plowed out. Mm -hmm. um, it's like up to you to take care of all of that so you can get in and out. Yeah, and I think living together for our first time, naturally we kind of just filled the roles, um, some stereotypical roles and such, you know, where I do most of the house cleaning and he does most of the outdoor work, um, but we try to do a lot of it together. So if we need to go cut wood, we'll go together. If we need to spend a day cleaning, you know, we'll split it up. So it's been a pretty natural find of roles for us, I feel like, and we've done a pretty good job balancing that. And if you're looking for a backhoe operator, Peyton is the best <laughs> yeah, equipment <I> operator <laughs> this side of the mountains. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> This is the lean-to I was talking about earlier. This is the 3 by 12 pitch. Um, so it essentially adds 10 more feet of storage space for us to keep important things dry. In the winter time, um, this is a good spot to um, push snow and remove snow from the property. It's yeah. also created um, an area for us to keep things dry. Um, so important things to us, whether that be, you know, motorcycles, fun toys, things like that. Um, and then especially our beautiful van again right here that has become <laughs> our adventure rig. Um, we like to go to hot springs in the winter mm -hmm. um, and just travel around with it. And this is a better shot of the ecology blocks I talked about um, source, that I sourced locally from a demoed property. So they're two and a half feet off the ground, which creates a great crawl space to make plumbing connections and do repairs underneath the container. We got our container from Seattle. Um, you can go to the port um, yourself and bargain with them, but we found it was easier to go through a dealer. Mm -hmm. So this is somebody that buys multiple containers a week and then sells them um, to customers. So we got ours uh, at a pretty good deal. Um, you can usually find them brand new or used. We decided to go with the used one. Mm -hmm. So it's got dings and dents all over it and usually that means lots of rust because they spend most of their life on ships. So when we first got our container, um, it was kind of a red color um, and lots of rust around. So we used a rust converter uh, to paint over the top. Um, and then we also used a wire wheel to kind of go and buff out those rust spots. Um, and then we followed that up with paint and primer. Uh, and that was a fun experience. <laughs> <laughs> So a lot of hours that people don't realize that go into these container homes is just the prep work initially when it comes on site with rust and dents and um, dealing with delivery. Every container comes with a nameplate. Um, and like I said, we got our container used. So it was very important to both of us to look up the serial number to see exactly what was shipped inside this container. And basically we wanted to avoid any, any kind of chemical shipping and things of that nature. So this particular container, um, like I said, it came out of Port of Seattle, but it was shipping mainly water and dry goods. We're both, well you're 24 now. I'm 23 and this is, this is our first house. So I wanted to have my own space and live somewhere without paying rent just into the black abyss that rent is. I wanted to invest my money into something um, and I wanted my my own space so to do that without spending two hundred thousand um, dollars we were able to build this for under twenty thousand so um, for both of us being young not having kids this is the perfect space for us. Yeah, I think I personally was kind of hesitant at first. Um, I would give him full credit for this idea. Um, but after he explained all of those things to me, um, I was fully on board um, and understood how beneficial it's going to be for our future in yeah. saving that money. For saving, yeah. yeah. Yeah, with my land payment and then we're just paying power. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'd, we're, we're definitely saving at least uh, two, three hundred dollars per month on what we'd be paying for rent around yeah. here, so. yeah and is going towards something that we own and will have forever. When we had the school bus before this, um, we were a little more mobile, um, but it's nice to like plant your roots somewhere and have a place to go back to when you want to, you know, that you can call home. That's definitely really nice. This build was super fun for me and Peyton. Um, we learned a lot throughout the whole build um, through trial and error most of the time, um, but it brought us closer together and you definitely have a better appreciation for the space you live in when you've put so much time and effort into building it. 
I think I personally learned a lot. Um, I don't think I could even tell you what tool was what before we started. <laughs> um, and now I feel like I could confidently use those tools that I didn't know how to name before. Um, so it was a, a good process um, and experience for me as well. You can check out part of the build series on YouTube at Matt and Peyton, or you can follow our personal lives on Instagram at Matt and Peyton as well. Thanks for coming out and checking out our tiny home. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Patreon for bonus content including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.